Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this week's installment of Conservation Today. My name is President Barack Obama. Today, we have four enthusiastic Paul Smith College students with us presenting on brook trout conservation efforts employed in a pond near their campus. Help me give Alex, Phil, Kyle, and Hunter a warm welcome. Thank you, President Obama. My name is Hunter, and my colleagues and I have been doing research on a conservation topic that is near to our hearts and campus. Located in Franklin County, New York, two and a half miles down Keys Mills Road is Black Pond. What makes Black Pond so special is that it contains a heritage strain of Adirondack brook trout, which also happens to be New York State's official state fish. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and Paul Smith College work together to conserve and manage the population of brook trout. But first, let's talk a little bit about the natural history of the brook trout. The brook trout, Salvolinus fontanalis, has a dark dorsal side that fades into the orange on its ventral side. It is distinguished by its fins that have a white stripe followed by a black stripe that then turns orange that blends into the ventral side. Brook trout also have speckled dots on their sides that are lighter than the rest of its body and some red dots surrounded by a blue halo as pictured here. Depending on how fast they reach maturity, adults can range in sizes from 5 to 10 inches depending on the temperature of the water. Of all the other species in Salvolinus, also referred to as char, brook trout have the shortest lifespan. Luckily for them, they are idioparous and can reproduce multiple times in their life before dying. This allows those that survive the winter months the ability to reproduce and add to the population multiple times before mortality. However, it has been reported that brook trout don't often live more than three to four years. I'm going to hand it off to Kyle, who will talk about their range. Thank you, Hunter. Here's an image from Trout Unlimited depicting the historic range of brook trout in the northeastern United States. Brook trout were introduced to the western United States in the 19th century, but are now posing threats to native cutthroat trout in the west. Brook trout can now be found in New England, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and parts of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. As Hunter stated earlier, brook trout are a cold water species that require high dissolved oxygen concentrations to survive. Well aerated streams are the source of dissolved oxygen and cold water contains more dissolved gases than warmer water as explained by Henry's Law of Gases. Brook trout have been reported to avoid water temperatures greater than 24 degrees Celsius and have a 100% mortality when exposed to 26 degrees Celsius water. Brook trout are characterized as opportunistic predators feeding upon whatever is available whether it be invertebrates, crustaceans, mollusks, and even other fish. Brook trout spawn in the fall when the water temperature is optimal. Females use their tails to create nests or reds where they lay their eggs. Females are known to create more than one red in a spawning season. The amount of eggs laid by a female is proportional to her length. A mature female brook trout can lay between 50 and 750 eggs. Tripp et al. 1979 uses an equation to estimate size compared to number of eggs and determine that a fish sized 125, 175, and 200 millimeters will lay roughly 56, 406, and 581 eggs respectively. Now I'll turn it over to Phil to discuss impacts to brook trout populations. Thank you, Cal. Brook trout in the Adirondacks are impacted by non-native species, acid deposition, and sediment deposition. Acid deposition occurs when sulfur dioxide is emitted from industrial plants and cars. The sulfur dioxide then reacts with the water in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is then deposited in the rain or snow onto the Earth's surface. There, the sulfuric acid reacts with aluminum sulfate in the soil to produce soluble aluminum ions. The ions then leach out of the soil and into the closest water body where they will interfere with the fish's gills. The aluminum hinders their respiratory system essentially asphyxiating the fish. 
Brook trout struggle to compete with non-native species when they're introduced to their native range for numerous reasons. Brook trout population size is often low or either extent in ponds and lakes that have non-native species. Examples in the Adirondacks are northern pike, yellow perch, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and golden shiners. In the mid-19th century, it is known that non-native species like yellow perch and smallmouth bass were beginning to colonize small ponds in the Adirondacks. Flick and Webster, 1992, reported that declining brook trout biomass is a direct effect of the introduction of non-natives like the ones listed above, and that yellow perch are especially detrimental. Whittier and Kincaid, 1999, were also reported saying, quote, Native brook trout and minnow assemblages, typical of northern lakes in the northeast, but now rare in the Adirondacks, appear to be at the greatest risk from continued introduction in northern, northeastern New England. Quote. In laboratory conditions, fine sediment deposition threatens brook trout and their eggs. The sediment fills in the spaces between the gravel and decreases the dissolved oxygen between the gravel, essentially smothering the eggs. The sediment also increases turbidity, or the amount of suspended particles in water. The increased sediment and particles is a result of logging, erosion, development, or urbanization. This impedes the brook trout's vision and thus its ability to forge. And now Alex will talk to you about Black Pond. Thanks, Phil. Black Pond is located in Franklin County, New York, adjacent to Keys Mill Road, and is home to a stock population of heritage-strained brook trout. The pond is one of a, a few water bodies in Saranac Lake Wild Forest to still have brook trout in it. In 1989, the DEC received funding to establish the Adirondack Brook Trout Restoration and Enhancement Program with the goals to reclaim lakes, stock them with heritage brook trout, and lime them to reduce the effects of acid deposition. DeMong established the value of brook trout fishing to be worth $18 million per year and also calculated the cost associated with one year of management to be roughly $475,000. Every dollar invested in brook trout management would be worth $37.89 in revenue generated by anglers. Rotenone, a chemical compound found in peas in South America and Southeast Asia, is used to reclaim lakes by killing a majority of fish without affecting any other species. New York was the first state to use the chemical to reclaim lakes in the 1960s. What makes rotenone an effective tool to reclaim lakes is that it isn't toxic to humans, birds, or mammals when ingested orally, but it is toxic to the fish. The chemical interferes with the mitochondria and the electron transport chain specifically by blocking the mitochondria's ability to utilize oxygen for respiration, ultimately resulting in the death of the organism. After all the fish are dead, desired fish are stocked. I'd also like to say that ironically rotenone is used as organic insecticide in the U.S. and Europe. The DEC website lists the three most recent stocking events since 2009. According to their website in 2010, 3,425 fingerlings of unknown size were stocked. In 2013, 2,800 fingerlings of unknown size were stocked. And in 2014, 2,800 two and a half inch fingerlings were stocked. However, for 2015, Black Pond isn't a listed water body that will receive stocking. This could potentially mean that the brook trout is beginning to establish a self-sustaining population. Barrier dams act as a method to prevent the movement of any unwanted species from migrating into a body of water. By preventing any species from migrating, it will avoid unwanted competition between native brook trout and undesired non-natives. DeMong reported that the four barrier dams constructed in the Adirondacks prevented upward migration of undesired non-native species. According to the DEC's website, the use of any live bait is restricted on Black Pond. However, the use of bait fish caught in their respective water body is allowed. Currently, there are not laws on the minimum size of brook trout caught in Black Pond, but you are allowed only five a day. The DEC and Paul Smith College recommend that you limit your catch to two or three fish smaller than 12 inches. We'd like to thank all of those who tuned into this week's Conservation Today. For more information on some of the topics we discussed, feel free to refer to our artwork cited page for all those sources of data we used in today's presentation. 
Again, we'd like to thank all of you and have a wonderful day.